The news has been out. You've heard about it on social media. You heard about it at Autumn Oaks. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the UKC Pro Slam format. I'm joined today by Trevor Wade, our UKC Coonhounds Program Manager, and also Alan Gingrich, Director of Hunting Ops at UKC. We're not going to waste any time today. We're going to jump right into some information. So, Alan, take us there. Well, you know, the purpose of this uh, Pro Slam series has been to give yet just another platform for hunters to uh, compete in. And some of the more, more of a, for an experienced enthusiast uh, at a professional type level and to draw some attention to some of the better dogs we think in the country that we'll see competing in them and that awards a significant monetary payout for those winners at those events. Okay, um, Trevor, what can you add to that? I know you've been really involved in this from really the start, so what can you add to that? Yeah, well, hey, it's something that we've been working on uh, for a long time. Uh, we've been uh, in the works. We wanted a, a pro style level of hunt for our hunters. Uh, and that kind of came with the TOC, you know, uh, in the Coonhound side of it anyways, and with the Clash of Champions and the Hunting Beagle side and the different formats. Uh, but we wanted, uh, you know, a level above maybe the local club level where you have your $30 or $25 entry fee hunts. And, and I think we've achieved that here with our Pro Slam format where we have our higher in, entry fee, higher monetary awards um, at these events. and. Uh, I don't know, we've been working hard at it and I think we finally have ironed out a lot of the details and I'm yeah. really looking forward for everybody to getting involved in this. Yeah, why don't, I'm not sure who can handle this on, uh, share with us some, I know one thing and a couple things I've been privy to some information that's been passionate for both of you guys is, um, is entry fees and, and um, you're not wanting to uh, box out any customer if we were to say and make it feasible for all but as we just seen coming out of autumn oaks uh, with the slam series uh, people were were hunting these and so uh, i'm going to come to alan alan tell us a little bit because i heard it from you a lot is really pushing this entry feed tell us about and we believe it's said it's something that's feasible to the hunter and and that's that's uh that's interesting to me yes yeah, so we've talked a whole lot about about these uh, pro slams to be uh, backing up to where we feel like we have an entry level event for e for anybody, a newcomer, an entry level event for them to go to, the intermediate, and now maybe even the the elite, so to speak, here with this program. And that's kind of what we're trying to uh, accomplish here. But yeah, you mentioned the slams, like the warm up slams we have at Autumn Oaks. We will still have those regular slams that are not the pro slams. Yeah. We will keep those. Um, and those are, you know, anywhere from thirty to thirty-five dollar entry fees. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we're talking here is going to be along the lines of a three hundred dollar entry fee, uh, where a, a traditional sixteen dog uh, pro slam will have a three hundred dollar entry fee, and it'll have a purse of thirty-nine hundred dollars that will pay out uh, basically two thousand for first place, eight hundred for second, six hundred for third, and five hundred for fourth. And that is based on a full entry of 16 dogs. That is based on a full entry, and we'll have uh, we will have a, uh, a, uh, a an abbreviated version of that in in the event it doesn't fill a 12 dog one. Uh, Trevor, you can maybe bring us up to speed on how that one would work. Yeah, yeah. So if if we don't fill to a 16, which I think is our, you know, that's something that we've talked a lot about. And we're going to put a huge emphasis, and we're going to rely on the host clubs for these events. It's going to be. Uh, hard to get one of these. They're going to be, uh, you know, uncommon to start out with. We're hoping to just have 10 or 12 a year starting out. Um, and, and at least we're talking about the Coonhound program right now, I believe. Um, and we were able to get a couple scheduled right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, they're limited. We're going to be reaching out to clubs directly. And like uh, Alan alluded to, for the 16 dog format, if we don't reach the 16, then we'll have to go down to the 12 dog format. Uh, that's worst case scenario, but it is something that we need to talk about. Yeah. There needs to be a 12 dog minimum. Yeah. And I think something you said it might not be intentional but what i think will come out of that is is um, we're, we're talking a 16 dog entry and you're talking only going to allow so many certain numbers i'm i'm not sure that number's probably not been set but they're going to be strategically placed with that just in itself will bring a level of eliteness that will make it um you know somebody you might have to drive a little bit but yet it still brings that level of eliteness and um and I think we've already had one of these already, Trevor, uh, that you can speak about a little bit of history, a little bit of information, how well it was received. Sure. Yeah, we had a pilot event on this back in November of 2022 where we kind of tested the waters on this. 
Uh, and we did things a little different. We learned a lot from that first pilot event and we changed a lot of it, to be honest. We, we decided some different things. We're actually gonna take uh, reservations uh, through our online data, database at UKC um, and not have the host club do that or have to deal with that responsibility, something to cover our bases there. And uh, to speak of that, that one's in 10 Mile, Tennessee, and that'll actually be the first one that we have scheduled. That was important to us to have a couple on the schedule uh, when this uh, goes live on our website and our webpage. And the first one is gonna be November 18th uh, of this year, uh, 10 Mile, Tennessee at the 10 Mile Coonhound Association, calling it the 10 Mile 300, going back down there, our field rep, Alan Roberts, he's, He's at the World Hunt working the event, and it's going to be one of our base ones that Alan mentioned. It's going to be a $300 entry fee, a 16-dog hunt uh, with a $2,000 payout for first place, $800 for second, $600 for third, and $500 for, for fourth. And as of listening to this, it's not very long till entries open up. October 18th is the open date for that very first uh, UKC Pro Slam. Yeah, and that's cool, too, because that's also an area that gets your dogs entered. You can head down there and hunt and um, see what it's going to be like for the uh, zones because I think that club is hosting one of our zones for the TOC, right? That's right. They We, we did have to sh uh, shuffle some yeah. things around for so our TOC So that's going to be an awesome opportunity there. Um, Alan, I'm going to go to a question with you. I know we're, you're going to kind of get into this a little bit later, but just give us an overview here very quickly. Um, this, this format is not just focused to uh, – to coon hounds. It's, it's going to be a, um, and I'm hearing some um, excitement in the beagle world as well, because being close uh, in my area to some beagle clubs, one of the heavier areas of beagles, and um, I know they're getting very excited about it. So kind of just touch base on that. It's not just a single program. Yeah, no, you're right, Jamie, about that. We do have the same thing for the beagles as well as the cur and feist. But going back to the beagles first here, the beagle, the hunting beagles will simulate the coon hound uh, they'll be very similar. We'll have a couple different formats for each one. We we're talking about the 16 dog one. We're going to get into another one here in just a minute, a 27 dog uh, pro slam, which is very exciting for us. And it's going to be unique in its own way here. That is going to be something we've never had before. Like I said, we'll get into it in a minute, but the Coonhound and the Beagle ones are going to be very, very similar. Yeah. There'll be a couple of very minor differences, but yeah. other than that, they're going to be very similar. Yeah. I could just tell, um, being, where I live, as you know, kind of in that, what I call the heartbeat of the, the beagle world. And those guys are getting very excited yeah, about that. And, and, and like coon hounds, we also have two that are already on the schedule. We'll have one in November and one in December. And I think as it turned out, both of them are going to happen on the same weekend as the coon hound one. So that's just ironic yeah. how that worked out. So we will have one in, in uh, West Virginia. It's going to be called the Mountaineer 300. It's going to be held at the South Harrison Beagle Club in November. And then in December, we're going to go up to the Full Circle Beagle Club in Pennsylvania. And they're also going to have a $300, uh, they call it the uh, Bash for Cash. All right. Yeah. I do know that Mitch and those guys at the South Harrison Beagle Club, they're getting very, very excited about that. And uh, maybe I can slide over to that one and uh, and watch that uh, watch that happen. Um, Trevor, let's come back to you for a second. Um, you being very involved as the Coonhounds uh, the Coonhounds program manager, what do you hear out there? What what information can you share? What gets you excited when you think about this? Because you're right on the ground level uh, of this event and talking to a lot of folks like me. So right. what do you? Yeah, well, hey, ever since the pilot event back in November, we've been fielding calls and emails about this, and people are excited for it. Anytime you bring out a new format, it's exciting for people. Um, and I think this one especially for, for as we get into, uh, you know, we're still, we're still pretty new to the money side of things at UKC, and, and it's exciting for people, new things, uh, new carrot to dangle in front of them, and new things to work towards. And, uh, and there's, I think there's just a lot of buzz and excitement yeah. out there. Now, let's, let's stay right there for a second. Um, we are going to keep, UKC is going to keep totals of money wins, right? Uh, no degrees issued at this point, or I'm not putting words in, but you're going to keep money value of one. So if a dog wins 800 bucks, we're going to know on record that that dog has won 800 bucks, correct? Yeah, hey, that was something that Alan was adamant about from okay. the beginning and, and talking about it from the inception is that we need a way to track the dogs. You know, we're not going to track owners or handler earnings, but we are going to keep track of, of money won at only select events. And that's what makes UKC Pro Slam so special compared to other slams. These are a limited 
events, and we're only going to be tracking Money One at UKC Pro Slams, the UKC Tournament Champions, and the UKC World Championship. Um, and that's going to be the only way to keep that's, track of that. And we're going to have that. Uh, we're going to have those standings on yeah. the UKC. Pro and that Slam kind of page. gives it another avenue of, of elusive, uh, sure. meaning something. But also for the person that's out there pursuing the title of Knight Champion, the title of Grand Knight, or one of the the Grand Knights to become Hall of Fame, cast wins championship, cast wins still count uh, towards those markers, correct? Yeah, that's another specific about this event. It's, it's going to be held using our full elimination format, um, and that means that any any cast win at these UKC Pro Slams on the Coonhound side is going to be a cast win towards our championship degree as well. Okay. That's awesome. That To me, that is that is a uh, a win, a, a win, win, and the idea of exclusive. Go ahead, I think I seen you had a thought. Well, I just want to add more, one more thing in. It's also going to count as a win towards your total for tournament champions in the year. So oh, that's really? for the for pro level handlers. Hey, yeah. they can go and get uh, qualified for the tournament champions just by keep competing in these high level events. Yeah, and that's a huge, uh, huge deal for those guys. Yeah, very, very much. Um, I think it sounds exciting, but Alan, I seen you had a thought as well. We, well, I do one thought on the just so uh, to, to to clarify the pro slams. Uh, the the monies will be recorded for those dogs earning money at the pro, uh, pro slams, the TOC, and the World Championship, but not the regular slams, non pro slams, right? Yeah, those just like the slams at exactly. Autumn Oaks, the yeah. warm up. Yeah. Right. Um, so now, is that going to be across the board? Um, in the Beagles and the, the Curs and Feist and the, the Gun Dog, are we going to be keeping the, pretty much the same format there? Pretty much. Anything that is pro slam is going to have monies recorded okay. uh, for the dog that earned those yeah. monies. And that's, that, that's pretty cool. I mean, that, that's something that you hear a lot on the field where I come from, and that's, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty interesting. And I love the fact of being innovative. And Trevor, what are you pointing at there? What do you got? Well, I just think uh, we've talked a lot about our base 16 dog formats. We talked about some of the reasons and, and the concept behind making these events. But, hey, let's talk about some of the other formats that we're going to be uh, shuffling out. I think we wanted uh, to be inventive with this and do something different. You know, it's uh, these limited entry uh, payout events aren't new to – to the hunting segments at all. Uh, so we had to put our own spin on it. And one thing that we've came up with was the 27 dog format that we've been working towards. And the cool thing about that, and you, you've probably seen it at the, at the World Championship, you see it at the TOC, is we're working towards three dog casts as much as we can just because it's a little different. And hunters like it. It's uh, one less dog to get out of pocket. It's one less dog to worry about if you're judging the cast. And it makes it a lot, uh, you know, it makes it, uh, it gives it a different feel. And that's why for the Coonhounds, we've we've got uh, the 27 dog, and we actually were able to get one scheduled. We were able to get one scheduled just Monday of this, <laughs> just a few days ago. I'll say that before this, and we wanted that, and that was important for us uh, to have one on the schedule when the web page goes live. And we were able to get one scheduled in Seneca, Missouri, uh, down there in December. We had to find somewhere a little bit further south. Can't think of a better club than down there at Shy and. Uh, Jennifer Cummings Club down there. Uh, they're always putting on major events. And for this 27 dog event, it's actually gonna be split into two rounds on Friday night. There's gonna be five three dog casts early, and there's gonna be four three dog casts late for a total of 27 dogs. The nine cast winners from those nine casts are gonna advance to Saturday night, where they'll draw out in three different casts, and then you'll have a three dog final cast late on Saturday. And those are gonna have some pretty good payouts. This one specifically is a little bit on the higher end of our entry level currently. It's gonna be a $1,250 entry fee. So a little, uh, you're talking about four digits here. This is uh, extreme for UKC, something new for us. And it's gonna be some really nice payouts. Uh, first place at that event's gonna bring home $14,000. Second place is gonna be $6,000. Third place is $3,000. And the six non-winners that advance at Saturday night are at least gonna get their entry fee and hopefully a hotel paid for uh, by bringing home $1,500 a piece. Yeah. That, uh, tell them the name of that hunt. I love that. Yeah, well, hey, Alan talked, actually talked to Jennifer after we left work and we're heading to the World Championship, and uh, she came up with the name Border Town Battle. I kind of like that. Yeah. It's a little catchy. Yeah, yeah, they're right there on the border of it's uh, what, Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Missouri. Oklahoma, you know, because when we were out there, that's what made me laugh when we were out there years ago for Youth Nationals, and, uh, and it was so hot. It was in July, and um, the Dairy Queen, I think, was in Oklahoma, and the, uh, the rest of the town was in Missouri, and, and I think I was at Dairy Queen more than I was at the uh, fairgrounds that weekend. I was trying to look and see the dates there in November. Do you have that? Well, it's, actually, it's going to be in December. December. I'm and sorry. we were able to get it scheduled for December 8th and 9th, okay. and that means we're going to open up entries a month before the date of the event. So that means that entries are going to open online November 8th. 
um, and that's whenever you'll be able to go on and get your entry for that event and you'll be able to choose whether you want an A round which is the early round or a B round which is the late round but remember limited entry so you need to be on there and get your entry quick because I think these are going to go pretty quick. In that yeah. area, there's a lot of coon hunters and there's a lot of them that compete at a high level. So yeah. this is going to be uh, this is going to be hot. And let me, let me say something right there to, to what he was saying. I think will be important, guys. Um, pay attention to the dates. Get these get these entries in. Don't wait to the last to the last minute and um, get these booked. Um, you, you, it should be a very simple process, but don't wait. Get them booked. Get them filled. You've been wanting events like this, so now we as hunters have to step up and um, and fill these spots so that uh, these guys will continue to bring to us a uh, level of event that many are uh, that many are requesting. So I think that's uh, that's very important, and that's across the board from from curs and feists to beagles to gun dogs. I think it's uh, very very important. Um, we just heard a coon got so excited about this program. We just heard a squaller go off. And so the coons are even getting excited about this. And so uh, that's a pretty good program, guys, if y'all can get a coon excited about it. So, uh, Alan, what do you got, man? You know, mentioned the 27 dog. We're going to have an option for the uh, for the beagles as well. Now, we have the Trevor mentioned the, the 15 dog early round in the A round and the 12 dog in the B round. The other way we can break down this, this uh, 27 dog event, that is going to work probably better for the beagles and it will in certain cases work good for the coon hounds as an option but break it down into three hunts three nine dog hunts you also get the same number but the the other cool thing about that an owner can in fact uh, have entries in each one of those three hunts yeah. you can get as many entries as you want there basically but uh it's a uh, yeah now, I'm, just I, up your odds i guess now, i might go into to a question here because we've not really programmed these questions just we're, we're talking so you brought up a good point. So if I would buy a entry in in hunt A and hunt B, or buy an entry in hunt A, B, and C, and maybe only have one dog, and would I be able to sell those entries B and C if I win early on A? Great question. And you, when you get it, reserve an entry, you're not going to be entering a dog. You are going to be, right. decide what dog you're going to enter on the day of. Matter of fact, if I have an entry to it on the day of the event, that dog doesn't even have to be in my name. I can enter. I can hunt your dog, Jimmy, yeah. or I can hunt Trevor's do dog. It doesn't do matter. Well, I probably don't want to. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I'm just, uh, but yeah, and then you can, to answer your question, I can also sell my entries. Let's say I only have one dog or I can't make her. I have a dog herd. I can't go. I can sell it to Trevor. Yeah. And there will be a form, just a simple form, that Trevor will have that, hey, he is now taking my entry to show yeah. entry takers when he gets to the event. Yeah, that's that's actually very, that's good. Uh, that's and the other thing, process. it is gonna be my responsibility to, I'm not gonna get, UKC is not gonna refund my entry in that case. That's gonna be between Trevor, Trevor. and I. He's, yeah. yeah, he'll pay you whatever yeah. you, the deposit exactly. is and then finish paying the- uh, We call it a transfer. Transfer, that's that's very good, guys, because that's that's some common practice that you see as well. So that's 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 actually very good. So Trevor, what um, you got a lot of information here. I'm trying to sneak and read stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, am I, are we missing anything that uh, the person that's been on the back the back of this? So what would be something that you would share that you think everyone needs to know? Yeah, well, I, th I think uh, we still have some formats probably to go over. Alan, did you want to talk any about uh, maybe some of your uh, squirrel dog formats? Yeah, the squirrel dog format is going to be very similar other than the entry numbers are just going to be lower. So we'll have like a traditional, we'll have a nine dog entry for a, uh, a regular entry. And that's going to be at a $300 entry fee, just to give folks an idea here, would be a 430 or uh, a total purse of $2,100. Uh, for a nine dog one. First place would pay a thousand, second place would pay 600, and the, or 1100 for first, 600 for second, and 400 for third. Yes. Now the other one that's an 18 dog entry, that just creates another round, which is kind of an interesting one, where at $300, the purse would be $4,450 for that one. And then that, that one, first place, would pay $2,000, and then 850 for second, and then you'd only have a two dog cast in that in, mm -hmm. in a two dog final. And then the uh, the uh, four non winners in the semifinals, they would be get a total of four hundred dollars. Yeah. So and if you win your cast, you're going to make more than you're going to yeah. bank a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And that's that's interesting and, and should be pretty exciting for the uh, the curs and feists because of when I worked the uh, the Kerr World Hunt, you we heard that a lot. Um, I just have to say, guys, uh, to both of you. 
um, thank you for, for getting on the uh, forefront of this. Probably more than anything of getting on the forefront, but was uh, listening to your customer, uh, providing a, um, a format that is uh, applicable to everybody. And so I, as a field rep, I, as a hunter, uh, I'm excited to see these happen more. I'm excited for what's getting ready to happen. And so I just want to say thank you to Trevor, to Alan, and to the hunters out there today. Let's, uh, let's fill these and let's make it happen. So good luck to you when you sign up for a UKC Pro Slam hunt.